some help. No. <laughs> I would help. Oh, they need a van now. Need a van now? <laughs> a bus. Yeah. No, the pray support. We'll, we'll pray in a minute. But yeah. The pray support. Right there. There you go. We're thankful they're here, and we're Amen. thankful there's more of them. Yeah. Yeah. The church is growing. Just a bigger blessing, huh? Oh, yeah. A dub, A dub, A dub. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Oh. Look, at, look at that. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and camels. Oh. He's got his camels on. Look at Oh, is, this, is this baby showing time? Baby yeah, showing time. It's, 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 it's in the order of service. Oh, tell me about oh. your food. Oh, yeah. He's, oh, he's, he's always hungry. He's always hungry? Yeah. Oh, and I bet he's not eating steak yet, is he? He doesn't eat hamper. Oh, look at this. Yeah. He looks good. Yeah. 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 Hey, that's the best call. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you should have seen him. He was, he was busting it this week. Congratulations. I was putting in a new porch in our backyard. And Anthony's done most of the work, so. Yeah. And I want to say, look how she does this every time. Look how skinny she is. <laughs> she does it every time. Eh? I don't know how she does it. She does it. Yeah. 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 Maybe she's thinking about that. Yeah. 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 Jim, bless it on the flexible, for they shall not be broken. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
moment, we would like to congratulate Anthony and Natalie for their new addition. Yeah. And we'd like to give them a card from the church. Yep. And from everyone in the congregation. Does she have a chair? Yeah, she's I know this, yeah, I know this was a plan, but can we do a dedication? Yeah. Real quickly? Okay. <laughs> oh, you tell him. I don't know what his name is. Anthony Williams. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I have to Lord Jesus, we just uh, speak a blessing over uh, uh, Anthony in the, in the name of Jesus. We dedicate this. We dedicate the baby to you, Father. Yes. In, in the name, name of, of Jesus, we thank you, Father. He will grow up to be strong, yes. healthy, yes. blessed, yes. and be a mighty, mighty powerhouse for you. Yes. And he will preach the word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He will preach the word and continue to preach the word and win many people to you, Lord. I thank you, God, that he will be a witness. He will be a light. And no weapon formed against him will prosper. So we dedicate... Uh, this child of yours, Father, in Jesus' name, we dedicate him to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, you're a good boy. Good boy. Yeah. There you go. We'll just stay right here. <laughs> you, you can keep him the rest of oh, the service. There you go. Oh. Right now, we're going to have Pastor Frank come out. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to say a few things before we get started. First of all, are we uh, just at the right angle for all this? And I'll. Uh, my problem is I like to move around, but I'm going to try to behave myself today. First of all, uh, I would like to say that uh, we are just rejoicing together with Natalie and Anthony about the addition and uh, the fact that you were able to be here today because this is a lot of effort. So uh, thank you for your effort and uh, what a delight to see the new addition to your family. Uh, this is wonderful. Then I'd like to take just a moment and uh, I know I don't have to really say it to you but I want to and that is say how much I appreciate Jim and, and his hard work for this church amen. and uh, amen. Amen. Uh, and uh, you know I came to know him just personally and then I began to I uh, got a few chances to experience his ministry but let me tell you what really has impressed me about Pastor Jim is, is his level of integrity and the passion of his heart for the things of Amen. God. Amen. And I believe he has an anointing of God on him. And uh, uh, it's, it's a delight to work with him in the process of uh, him ultimately becoming your pastor of record. And uh, me, I'm the hit and run pastor. I come in, go, uh, but uh, Jim is here. So I, I, I deeply appreciate him. And boy, did those flowers smack us in the eye when we drove up <laughs> the color it's wonderful and then just before we get into God's Word I want to say uh, for when this finally gets out on Facebook and uh, YouTube or wherever it's at and uh, and properly edited uh, 
I want to say that any of those folks that are watching, if you'd like to just have a refreshing, informal time of worship, we're about 20, 25 minutes uh, east of Paso Robles. And uh, uh, we're having more fun than it's probably legal to have. Uh, and we're just enjoying worshiping God and fellowship with, with one another. And then uh, in a moment, we're going to get into God's word and uh, what God's laid in my heart for today. And, ah. This is the day the Lord has made. My wife told me that when she first heard that scripture, she thought it was only Sunday that he made. But she discovered that uh, uh, she has some interesting observations I've learned after we got married. Uh, uh, that whatever you do inside the house, God can't see. But when you go <laughs> So I'm writing a whole new theology thing uh, based upon the things I've learned from Sandy. And uh, uh, it's a wonderful learning experience. So this morning, as we take a look at God's Word, I want to talk to you about why we're here as a church, who we are. Now, first of all, I'd like for you to get your swivel neck on and just look around at everybody, both big and small, and that's here, okay? Now, the reason I did that is I don't know what your opinion is of one another, but I got a feeling that we all care about each other and uh, we've got a pretty good opinion of one another and so on. But do you have any idea what you just looked at? Do you understand that nothing we see here will make it into eternity except those you just looked at? Let that sink in. Do you understand that gold is so valueless to God he paves the street with it? Let's let that sink in. But you, as individuals, are so valuable to God that he sacrificed all for you and I. And for those that are listening outside of our group here, and for those of us here, if you have ever wondered what this church thing is all about, and why churches are essential, and the governor is dead wrong to tell us church is not essential. Amen. Now, we may need to socially distance. We may need to take precautions. That's just good sense. But the fact is, I'd like us to take just a few moments to look at who and what is the church. Now, having spent more years on this earth than I care to admit, I've learned a few things. One of those things I've learned is the grace of God is way more powerful and larger than I first imagined when I encountered his goodness and grace. Amen. Yes. It is going to be wonderful to find the people that are in heaven that we did not expect. I'll be surprised to see them there. And they'll be shocked to find me there. The grace of God is not some type of what I like to call greasy grace or sloppy agape where you can do anything and make it to heaven. Some people seem, you know, seem, seem to think that. There are qualifications for getting in. And those qualifications have to do with faith in Jesus Christ and appropriating the grace of God for your life and taking God's grace as a power to overcome evil not to accommodate e evil. We are not a club of people who like each other and get, a lot, get together once a week. Come together, pay our dues. When we worship and giving, I, prepare, I try to prepare a check. Uh, and when I do so, I like to be able to say in my mind, Father, with this portion of my life and my substance, I worship you. To me, the offering is an essential part of worship. And I would say for those times when we are living in not abundance, that we take a part of the little. It's not because the church needs it, though the church does, but it's because we need to worship with every part of us. Amen. Jesus looked favorably on the woman who put a penny in. It is not the amount. 
it is the worship. It is the sacrifice. And uh, I look at uh, basically a season of my life in retirement when I really don't have income. And the tithe is based on income, your increase. But I want to take a part of what I have and declare to God, not only the hours of my life and day belong to you, but that part of my life that is financial belongs to you as well. I didn't mean to talk about that so much, but simply to say, it's not a matter of paying our dues and meeting once a week and uh, uh, having fun together. Those things may happen. We're not a, a, a political action group that's trying to change the world. I know, I hear Christians something. Well, I just want to change the world. Not leave the world alone. The world isn't going to change. We want to find, bring Jesus to the world and let Jesus change the world. Amen. We're not here to preserve the traditions that have been handed down from our parents. So that may not be a bad thing. Not all tradition is bad. I remember one person saying, sacred cows make good hamburgers. Um, we need to be flexible and changeable with the times. But the reality is, it is not our tradition that's going to get us to heaven. It's going to bring grace into the lives of people. So let's peel back all the trappings and wrappings and let's look at what our the cardinal reasons, the unifying principle of what is the church. You see, you don't have to have 10,000 people like one of our churches in L.A. that right now is <laughs> having a battle with the city of Los Angeles because they're meeting indoors. And so far, they've won all the legal battles. Or a group of 20, 18, 25, 300, 400. In a few weeks, I'll be preaching to an empty sanctuary that seats probably close to a thousand. And uh, going out online and on the radio. The church can take many forms. You know, there's a, uh, a twisted beatitude. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be broken. <laughs> and of all people that should be flexible, it is the church. Now, this church, we don't really have this issue that I know of. If we do, then I'm speaking out of ignorance of it. But there are some churches that if a guest were to come in and sit in your pew, there are members that say, you're sitting in my spot. I had that happen at the church I pastored one time, and I had to talk to the lady. I said, it's not your spot. Well, I'm there every Sunday. I said, yeah, but those people didn't know that. I said, why don't you behave like a Christian? <laughs> we were good friends. Now, uh, boy, could I tell you things about that. She was a salty lady and uh, from the South and had more interesting expressions. And uh, I got to watch her trans transform over the years in our church from being a very strong racist to become a godly Christian, winding up with one of her best friends of the church to be in a person a black lady and what a difference because when I first came to pastor that church she would have never let that happen but that's what the grace of God does it changes lives laws don't change hearts Jesus changes hearts Amen. Amen. now let me say this about the church I've said cardinal doctrines unifying principles uh, C.S. Lewis called it mere Christianity we're different. We're assembly of God. So we're different than, uh, than the Baptist church. We're different than the Catholic church. We're different than the church of Christ. We're different than, and we're going on name the various denominations. But there's certain core things that a church must believe to be the church. And this morning, I'm just going to talk about one of those. I think there's basically four uh, for us as a church. Because one of those things is a little different than some of the other churches see. But if you ever are interested in what is the basic Christianity, I would recommend C.S. Lewis's book, Mere Christianity. This is what unifies us all across the board. But as a church here, I guess for people that are listening that might be science fiction um, fans, for the Star Trekkers, and I'm sorry, I, you may need to forgive me for this, but I'm one of those. Right. I like fiction. And uh, that's why I don't, I'm not offended whenever 
I hear somebody talking about evolution. I like fiction. <laughs> so anyway, we'll move on from that. Uh, this is the prime directive. You know, they have the prime directive. And theirs is not to interfere in other cultures. Well, our prime directive causes us to interfere in everybody's culture. Our prime directive is very different. And you're going to find our prime directive, our cardinal teachings, they're going to be in our teaching, they're going to be in our music, they're going to be in our sermons, they're going to be in our discussions, and all the many activities will revolve around them, including our social activities. Our message determines who we are and what we are. And this church has four simple truths at the heart of it. I'll mention all of them before I finish this message, but... We don't have time to talk about all of them this morning. You see, what people believe means something. And if it doesn't mean something, don't believe it. Or if we act like we don't believe it, then we really don't. Because belief leads to action. Many years ago, I was living in a city very close to the ocean. Um, Took a little trip downtown with my wife. And as we were looking out at the harbor, we heard this awful noise. So what is that? Now, I had lived there long enough, I should have recognized that sound. And then we saw police cars going to restaurants and bars and people coming out and leaving. Hmm, I wonder what that is. The park there right on the ocean was empty. I says, well, let's drive home by way of Pebble Beach. Now, it's not the famous Pebble Beach. This is in Crescent City. We had our own Pebble Beach. So we want to drive along the ocean there, and we did so. And I wondered where everybody was at. Got home, turned on the news. That awful sound was a tsunami warning. <laughs> That's a good time to go to the beach. Yes. <laughs> Crescent City had been wiped out many years ago in the 60s by a tsunami. There had been an earthquake off the coast. Uh, I found out later that our projector in the church had gone askew, the shaking of an earthquake, which I never felt. Um, I had totally ignored the tsunami warning, and I got away with it because the tsunami did not happen. Belief determines action. Had I known the warning, and knowing what it was, I would have went for high ground. High ground there was Hayuchi. Yep, that's the name of a little village, little town. And uh, that's where everybody headed, up the hill to Hayuchi, for the tsunami that didn't happen. You see, if we believe something, we will take action. And the actions we take will build a lifestyle. And a lifestyle will determine your destiny. Amen. Amen. And so what we believe is very important. First and most important. That's why I had to look around. Ordinary. Not exactly perfect. Did you see anybody like that this morning? No names. <laughs> Don't look again. <laughs> like you and me. Are you ready for this? Can be friends with God. After all. The Lord. It's not just Abraham. But you and I get to be God's friends. The creator of the universe. Pastor Jim was talking about that. I mean, we can't see the stars now, but on the dark night out here, you know what it's like. Mm -hmm. Oh, gorgeous, beautiful. The so-called light pollution of the city, not interfering. And you look out there, and we, we're part of one galaxy, the Milky Way. And the planet Earth is located at the specific spot in our solar system and galaxy where we can see, according to science and astronomers, we can see more than if we were in any other position in the galaxy. Because God wants us to search out his wonders and the majesty and the beauty of his work. The heavens declare the glory of God Amen. and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day at her speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. That's what the Psalms told us. 
It is amazing. And I haven't updated my facts. This pops into my mind. With the Hubble telescope, <laughs> I, I love it when we learn more and more. You don't have to worry about anything we learn just proving your faith in God because your faith came from God, the Creator. And the Hubble, Hubble telescope, at one point they said there's at least five galaxies for every human on Earth. Mm. Wow. Mind-boggling. Yeah. And he is the creator of them all. I cannot imagine the kind of being that God is. And I cannot hardly imagine, though I believe it, that that creator put on human skin and came the size of that baby in arms over there and trusted a woman by the name of Mary to not drop him and to nurse him and to grow into the one that we know as Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ. Talk about love. Talk about majesty. God, the ultimate high, holy king of kings, lord of lords, and master, he takes notice of each individual on this planet. And he wants a relationship with us. This is unbelievable, but believable. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. You know, the governor doesn't know you by name. He doesn't know me by name. And I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> I'm not a fan. But that's not my point. I don't know how many of you saw this past week. Alice Johnson. I was so impressed. She said, I always remembered that God knew my name. She was in prison. Would have spent the rest of her life there. Even in my darkest hour. And she made the best of her life in prison. And as she said, she deserved to go to prison, but not for that long. But I never thought a president would know my name. She's the lady that the president pardoned and got her released from prison. And now she's out ministering in so many levels. It's just amazing. I know politicians know my name. How do I know that? Because of all the fundraising letters I'm getting in the mail. <laughs> But they may not know my name. It's a computer telling me that. I've been around long enough. What if the governor of the universe is paying attention and knows me by name? He does. He knows me by name so much that he's got a, another name reserved for me. A family name for the family of God. And the book of Revelation tells me that he will give me, he will give you a new name. I've kind of got used to answering to Frank. And how, any others out there go by your middle name or an odd say, yeah, I always have to, okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, I have a doctor's appointment. Willis? I go, that's my evil twin. You do not want to meet him. I don't like him. I go by Frank. Okay, when were you born? What's your zip code? And no, 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 no. To make sure it's me. You ever have a financial institution want to make sure that somebody isn't trying to make a deposit that's not you? Now, let them! If they want to put money in my account, let them! <laughs> I don't understand that. But the governor of the universe is paying attention to you. It's amazing that he is. And with remarkable sensitivity, he says, according to the prophet, the ancient Hebrew prophet Isaiah in the 46th chapter, he says, I have made you. And I will carry you. I will sustain you. And I will rescue you. I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Boy, do I want to run around right now and start stand in one spot. Ah, what a promise from the ancient prophet. What a promise from God himself as he speaks speaks through Isaiah. You know, I like, I, did, I don't know if you've ever thought of it, but I call 
But Isaiah is the gospel according to Isaiah. There's so much about Jesus Christ in that ancient book, mm -hmm. especially Isaiah 53. But that's another message. Rescue us from what? What does that need to be rescued? I remember um, a man in history, I'm not going to use his name right now, but when he had been asked, did you make peace with God? He says, I didn't know we quarreled. quarreled. <laughs> and the most pitiful thing is all, is those who have been crippled by their own arrogance and do not know they need help. I need help. I've been accused. I've said, well, you know, faith in God is a crutch. Yes, and I need a crutch. Mm -hmm. I might even need a wheelchair. I might need more than that. But we all do. The sad thing is those who try to get along without the help. Rescue from what? From our own follies, mistakes, our own sin. You see, a lot of us like the disciple Peter, and even as an apostle, we have a talent for shooting ourselves in the foot. And I've said this before, you've heard me. Peter is one of my favorite people in the Bible. Not because I hear he was a big fisherman, and I'm not big. But, uh, so I don't identify with that. But I identify with taking my foot out of my mouth so there's room for the other one to go in. <laughs> Thank God for a Savior. And this is our cardinal point. This is the foundation for all the other things that we believe. You see, it is that God sent his son Jesus to our world over 2,000 years ago. What is that like? It is like an author who's writing a book. And he says, I'm not just going to write this. I'm going to go on to the pages. I'm going to incorporate me. I'm not just writing a book about me. I'm going to live the book. And he came among us. The story of your life is not over. And the author, you may think is you, but ultimately it's God. Interact with it. Be like any friend of God. Negotiate with it. He'll win. <laughs> And it will be for the best. Jesus came to show us what God was really like. Have you ever heard somebody talk about, well, I really, you know, I don't like the God of the Old Testament. I like the God of the New Testament. You realize that the New Testament is just a historical record that continues from the Old Testament? And there are not two gods? Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the one that was on top of Sinai, thundering and lightning. <clears throat> if you've seen me, this Galilean, who opened blind eyes, who healed the sick, who gathered children in his arms and said, suffer the little children to come unto me, will ride again in judgment on a great white horse at the end of the age. There are not multiple gods. The good news is there is a God. Amen. And you're not him. Amen. And I'm not him. That is good news. He came to show us what God is like. He extended heaven's olive branch in our direction. And some have welcomed this. I'm among those. You're among those. And it's our task to see that more understand how this should be welcomed. Others have rejected him and pushed him away. The day will come when every knee shall bow. But until then, there are those who are arrogant, adamant. And you know, it surprises some that I think God could never reach. He does. And I hope he reaches some that I've already written off. Because I don't have the right to write them off. Eventually, his critics crucified him. But he represented God's great gift of salvation. And the Apostle Paul would write to the young minister, Timothy, in his very first letter to him, encourage him and instructing him how to minister God's word. In the second chapter, in the third verse, he said, God, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, 
the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was necessary. That Jesus come and die. Necessary because our mistakes. Necessary because of our imperfections. Necessary because of our sin. Singular. And our sins, plural. Now that brings me to the question. I think you know the answer to this question. Do we sin because we are a sinner? Or are we a sinner because we sin? The answer is yes. <laughs> Jesus came to take care of the inherited sin of Adam that skewed our DNA for doing the wrong thing. But he also came to pay for our individual failings. And the word sin means missing the mark. Not only sometimes have I missed the mark, but the target was on the side of the barn. I missed the whole barn. But in that, he not only brings us forgiveness, he improves our aim. Day after day, we get better and better and better Amen. when we walk in Praise his grace. This is what the Bible calls sanctification. Holiness. Not holier than thou. I'm just as messed up as the next person. But I have somebody straightening out my life. Who loves me dearly. And he will love each and every one of you as well. And naturally we have to reach out to accept the Savior. It is not automatic. Now I don't mean to be given Greek lessons. Because I know very little about it. I've taken Greek and I've studied Hebrew. And... Uh, one guy says, the only Greek I know has a little deli, a Hebrew, he's a tailor down on, <laughs> downtown. Uh, but there is a Greek word that says that we are to receive eternal life. Now, I'm going to give you that word. It's luo. I know, it's a funny looking word, and it's only got three letters in it. And it looks like L-U-W. But it's actually L-U-O, because a W is an omega. And the L goes like this. Anyway, it means I receive. The O on the end of it means I. And you, if you change that, and it changes um, whether it's I, U, E, whatever. But the fact is, it doesn't just mean receive. It means I take. They have the same word for take and receive. Take the Lord Jesus Christ. Ooh. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the same word. And so it's like I come out and here's this tree full of fruit. It says, you're welcome to it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> if it were peaches, I'd be so satisfied. I've got a peach. Not until I take it. It's been given, but I haven't taken it. I still haven't taken it. It may be in my possession. It's so close. But let me tell you, open your mouth. This is already clean. You don't have to wash it. Put the fruit in your mouth. Bite down. And taste the sweetness of salvation. Taste the sweetness of his gift. You see, it's a two-way street. He declares us acceptable after all, no matter what we've done to be unacceptable. He welcomes us into his spiritual family. He doesn't just say, okay, now you get to go to heaven with a whole parcel of other people that aren't going to hell. No. He puts his familiar stamp on us. You're now a child of God. Not just a creation of God. Your family. When you think about eternity, what are you excited about? Gates of Pearl? I've seen Pearl before. Streets of Gold? Well, that's pretty nice. Foundations of precious stones? Tree of life? No. Here's what I'm excited about. I'm coming home. In my father's household. Uh, I know the King James says, are many mansions. But the actual word says, are many dwelling places. Family spots. Now, I'm not going to take away your mansion. Because I didn't give you one. But I want to give you something better than a mansion. I want you to understand that he's got a place for you in the family of God. 
that is constantly being prepared for a daughter and a son. And in this family, you don't have to worry about providing for your life in eternity. And you don't have to worry about it here. You just partner with him. Here's the way I like to explain it. In a marriage, usually you share your assets, and they're common. Well, in the marriage supper of the Lamb, you know one of the things he gives to us? It's a MasterCard. It belongs to the master. He says, you charge what you need. Now, the stores around here won't take it. But in eternity, he pays for it all. The master is in charge of our life. That's what this is. You see, he begins this process of helping us to grow and mature to be, be the kind of people who will be comfortable in heaven. And people that don't go there, it would be more torment for them to be in heaven than it is to be in hell. Why would they want to be in the presence of God? Why would they want to be with one who they cannot stand here and would have to stand in for eternity? To love God, to love heaven, to love the future, you have to love the creator and the designer of it all. Jesus said it this way, and this is the beginning spot. A lot of us act like it's the end, but it's not. This is the start. If I'm climbing a ladder, it's the first rung. If I'm running the rake, a race, it's that moment when the gun goes off. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's the start. There's so much more. There's daily sanctification. There is learning the sweet voice of God. He said, my sheep know my voice. His lambs do not know his voice. Lambs will follow the sheep. But the sheep follow the shepherd. They know his voice. We have to grow till we know his voice. There is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The constant infilling of the Holy Spirit. There is the feeding daily upon the word of God. Reading the scriptures. Being born again is not the end. It's the beginning Amen. of the end. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what we understand, and this is what our church believes, that salvation is through Jesus Christ alone. There's no other religious leader, no other prophet, none other. For Jesus was not just a prophet. He was God come in human flesh. It is his law that we have violated, that we have broken. It is a relationship with God that, has been damaged by our sin. But he loves you and he took it upon himself to pay for my sin and for your sin. Hence the most memorized scripture in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. But don't forget the next verse. <laughs> verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Jesus came into this world to save us from our sin. And it's through Jesus alone that salvation is provided. And much of the world is offended by that. Well, there are many ways that all lead to the same destination. That's true. It's called hell. There is one way that leads to eternal life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. There are those that say, wow, that's kind of hateful to say that. No, if you got a problem with that, take it up with Jesus. The one you all say was a great teacher. I believe he's a great teacher, but not God. Well, then you don't believe it. He's not a great teacher. He's either God come in human flesh or he's a liar. He is the living God, the creator of the universe. In reality, the Son of God. For there is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He came to save us from our sin. And he alone is the path of salvation. Now, the scripture says, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. That tells us that we have a part. That's not good works. It's just releasing our faith. I call upon the name of the Lord. His name is Yahweh our Savior. When you translate that into Greek, it's Jesus. 
He translated it into English from Greek, and it's Jesus. But let's come straight into the Hebrew, Yahashua. Jesus and Joshua bore the same name. It means Yahweh, our Savior. He is our Savior. Whoever calls on that name shall be saved. And how does that happen? By repentance toward God. Repentance is a change of attitude. See, many a person weep in an altar and cry and think it was repentance. That's nah, kind of like people that get caught. They're full of grief when they get caught. But will they change their life? Repentance is when you come away from that altar and say, I've changed my mind. I don't want to be bound by my sins and failures any longer. I don't care how many times I fall, I'm going to get back up. And God's going to help me until I overcome these things that bring pain to my life. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you exercise faith in God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I who could do little or nothing, I now can do all things. I can do this with the help of God. The Bible calls it the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Paul would write to the church at Ephesus in the second chapter at verse 8. These words, words of encouragement so they never forget the source of their salvation. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. As we've reflected in God's word today, what's he dealing with your heart about? I'm going to lead us in prayer that I hope that those that see this on Facebook or whatever medium they're seeing this will pray along with me. And I'll ask you to pray and adjust it to your own needs. However, God is dealing with your heart. And if you've not made a full commitment to Jesus as Lord and Savior, this is a good time to do it. I've written this out. I want to get it right. And I'd like to ask if you'd just bow your heads with me and talk to God one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have to speak it out loud. If that helps you, do so where you're sitting. But inside your heart, something like this. With your own words, pray. Dear God, I'd like to make things right with you. I admit I haven't always lived the way I should and I've broken your rules. I ask for your forgiveness of my sins. Based on what Jesus did on my behalf, please accept me as one of your children. I recognize you as the authority of my life and I'll do my best to follow your direction. Be merciful to me, O oh God. Amen and amen. For any of you hearing this message, if you've done that with faith, you should begin to sense a transformation taking place in your heart and life. Because you see, there's no distance in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're here in Shandon. You're wherever you're viewing this. But the power of God is everywhere. Now let me tell you those four basic things that our church is a part of. The things that we think are essential. We believe in Jesus as Savior and the only Savior. We believe that he is the healer of our souls, minds, and bodies. And that when we are sick here, we can ask for healing and believe God for that. We also believe that he has given the Holy Spirit. And he is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. That we can be empowered by the presence of his Spirit today, just like his apostles were in their day. But that's not all. The Bible is clear that none of us knows when it will happen, but he is the soon coming king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. God bless you and enjoy the goodness of the Lord, for this is the day the Lord hath made. May the Lord bless you, and may you go in his grace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God is good.